Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Camera I set up specifically for this intro. What am I doing, you're asking? Well, I'm checking out one of these brand new computer RPGs, and I like RPGs, but I can't help but feel I'm a little bit out of my element with Broken Roads, today's video sponsor. Broken Roads is a story-focused PC RPG taking place in a post-apocalyptic Australian outback. And frankly speaking, I have little experience with this subgenre, as I'm not a big fan of, well, keyboards. To me, keyboards are for work and gamepads are for gaming. I just can't be bothered to learn what each of my 104 keys on my desktop apparatus are bound to for one specific title. So I performed the prior experiment as a test to see how well I could grasp the controls when I removed all unnecessary options from the keyboard. In doing so, Broken Roads has my undivided attention. I can fairly assess its quality and pros unfettered. Is this a roundabout way of saying I played the game solely with a mouse and was impressed by that? I'll let you decide. As for the game's story, nuclear fallout has annihilated 80% of the Australian populace. I hate when that happens. And now the remnants of society must endure the harshness of the Australian outback and nuclear poisoning as humanity attempts to rebuild civilization while fending off raiders and gangs of rampaging emus. Before we start playing, we must create our character. I chose the name Pungus the Runch for obvious reasons. We then select an appropriate backstory to give the character a goal to strive for. This affects dialogue selection options, and the backstory has a unique intro, which focuses on the strengths and skills you'll be using to survive in the outback. I favored the barter crew from Pungus, as his backstory before the bombs dropped was that of a humble marketing major, whose sole goal in life was to become fabulously wealthy, and hopefully acquire enough silicon rocks to smash together and create a GTX NVIDIA 4090 graphics card. Once acquired, he would sell these cards to data centers around the world at a 40% markup. But to do so, he needs two things. Rocks and data centers to sell to. All in due time, Pungus. But for now, we'll be mostly trading literal feces for firearms, then using firearms to rob the seller and take back our crap. Oh yeah, did I mention Pungus the Runch is a Machiavellian nihilist? I mean, you probably assume that, given he was a marketing major. But after answering a quick survey as honestly as I possibly could, we were supplied with our moral compass, which like a real compass, I only pretend to understand the mechanics of. And after painstakingly reading what each of my starting stats do and allocating my points with maximum efficiency, I then accidentally hit auto assign and just started playing the game anyway. And thus, Pungus the Runch was born into this scorched land. We arrive in the very, very small town of Kokobi in Western Australia, home to, well, not much of anything. As a member of the bartering crew, we are assigned to help supply the town with wares from our trusty camel, and also to supply the nearby town of Brookton with water. Yes, I know. Real tough guy stuff, running errands, but somebody's got to do it. Frida Lamb takes us under her wing, and we meet with the locals to see what's for trade. The local youth, Tina, wants a cat sign from the local gambling addict, and the gambling addict wants a part for a slot machine that Ian Mason, a militaristic man in an era where a organized military has not existed for 100 years, has the part, but he wants a hat in a rough part of town. With no other option, we loot the outskirts and locate the hat, and some raiders locate us. Perhaps instinctually longing for the days of holiday shopping, the duo attack Pungus, as they also want the hat. And, and I presume our other stuff, they just kind of attack us. And unfortunately for them, they do not put up much of a fight. Sprint? You call that a sprint? You got glass knees? Oh my god. God, killing people over hats. Can you imagine something that barbaric? <laughs> Pungus dispatches them as quickly as they arrive and completes his trades, proving his trustworthiness to Frida, but seeing as I just performed three good deeds back to back, it's time to bring balance back to my moral compass. And to bounce off that action, we decided to take with us an elderly man. Said Thomas has been feeling ill lately and wants to ride to Brookton. We oblige. He'd shake our hand, but he seems to have an odd fit of the runs, and yeah, toilet paper is not exactly easy to trade for out here. We link up with Mick Jones, the barter crew leader for Brookton, and set off. Once there, we see some semblance of civilization, and deliver the gallons of water to the local makeshift hospital, and have Sid be treated for what ails him. Realizing I yet again performed two selfless actions back to back, betraying my mocking the villain nature, I happen upon a prisoner baking in the sun. He compliments my muscles and asks if I can get him out. I do so without any hesitation, defying all rhyme and reason, reflecting my background as a nihilist with a frightening amount of accuracy. After a day of doing absolutely no bartering and exactly one petty crime, me and Mick celebrate my arrival, 
by having a pint in the nearby pub, and Mick congratulates us on the many trades I absolutely did not do. A comically short time later, the settlement is completely on fire, as raiders have discovered it. I can only ponder the butterfly effect that has sent these events into motion. Mick instructs us to rescue as many civilians as possible, but I instantly screw this up by walking near the hospital and triggering a lengthy cutscene. The local doctor is boarding townsfolk in the back of a stuffed ambulance, but in regards to old Sid Thompson, he has contracted radiation poisoning and could endanger the health of the other citizens if he's allowed on. So the doctor protests, which is a perfectly logical thing to do. However, you have the option to just try and sneak him on anyways. She reacts accordingly. <laughs> Why do they even allow that as an option? Funny script. She isn't completely evil though, and leaves the poor guy a handgun to defend himself. We're out of time, and we leave Mick, having saved absolutely no one thanks to my sheer incompetence. Hanging out in the desert, we wait for the smoke to subside and return to the town with scouts to look for survivors. One of these scouts steps over Sid's lifeless corpse as we look for supplies in a local clinic, but the raiders have picked it clean. Fungus the Runch makes sure to recover the pistol from Sid's grasp, as it could be a useful bargaining chip in the future. Let us sell for a markup, we would have to do something about the brown stains on the grip. With the dead buried and nothing to show for it, we return to Mick, who tells us our best bet is to make ways to the next town of Meriden, a more fortified settlement, so we prepare for the trek into the outback. During our travels, we eventually come to see a trail of smoke floating up into the horizon. Upon closer examination, we discover an airplane, and since this is 2100, that's extra peculiar. We prepare to search the surroundings for loot when a stranger comes into frame. The uncharacteristically friendly DJ greets our caravan with a wave and smile. His reason for being here being the same as ours, but seeing as we completely outnumber him, we accept his assistance and search the airplane for loot. It doesn't take long for us to find the passengers and a likely suspect returning to the crime. Sadly, they significantly outrun us some other day. Some ways away from the plane, we discover a man named Reuben idling by and tells us right away that he was the first one to the airplane, and inside was a shiny golden nugget. We take the nugget in exchange for his life, as nuggets are a good conductor of electricity, and well, we're going to make that graphics card, god dang it, in exchange for his life. DJ nags us that, oh, come on, that's so mean, like, we took everything he had, and we can't give him anything, ah. His extreme nagging is successful, so we decide to take him to Meriden with us, along with our caravan. At the town gates, we see a gigantic line, but Mayor Smith lets us cut in exchange for the golden nugget. A stranger protests as his home is under attack and needs to speak with the mayor right away, but she is not interested in saving a single camp. With protection from the mongrels secured, we take a jog around town. However, Mick is not satisfied, and I'm not satisfied I lost the golden nugget in exchange for my life. So me and Mick hatch a plan. I will act as the mayor's gopher in exchange for her good favor. For you see, she's running for re-election and wants us to butter up the powerful houses so she can secure her win. She doesn't necessarily fear the opposite party, but it's better to not have these things left up to chance. Her opposition, one Malcolm Hogan, is waiting for us right outside the mayor's office. He enters with his shirt unbuttoned and fly unknowingly down. Malcolm suspects the mayor is holding something in the bank and Hogan wants to know what it is. If he is re-elected, we can be handsomely rewarded, which most likely means our gold nugget. So instead of assisting the mayor, we assist Hogan. So we talk around town and learn about the bank guards and essentially get blackmail on them. We use this blackmail and rather easily get them to leave their posts. Fungus the Runch kneels down and listens in on a grate in the front of the building and speaks to one man, Scott measure the man from the plane crash he's from calgary and he says that plane was his biggest experiment yet what the heck does that mean he then talks about mutants that eat your brains off and his town leaders wielding insane power after several hours of the game's story being played completely straight scott measure's introduction was engrossing creepy and honestly just why, why does he i mean why does he look like? What's going on here? Just as the convo is about to get to the good part, we are jumped by a burly woman, and a bag is placed over our head. Pris, short for Empress, isn't that cute, is the mayor's assistant, and has abducted us to be scared straight. But Pungus, Pungus is a nihilist, and his 
inability to care about anything that isn't of monetary value disturbs Empress. And we escape in. Yet again, a very, very comedic amount of time. I, I, I just talked my way out of that like nobody's business. We report our findings to Mr. Hogan, who finally has some ammunition to use in the upcoming electoral debate. Later that night, the man from the front of the line that we skipped makes his plea to the mayor one more time. And surprisingly, both candidates dismiss him as saving his town would take more effort than it's worth. Wow, talk about harsh. He doesn't take it well and storms off. And Hogan uses his blackmail to attempt to win the debate, pointing out how Mayor Smith is keeping dangerous fugitives from a powerful settlement in this very town. Now is the moment I'd like to say if you are ever interested in playing Broken Roads, I recommend clicking off the video now. And if you'd like to check it out on Steam, click the link down below. Because what is about to happen right after this made my jaw hit the floor. Before Hogan can resume his debate, a loud bang is heard nearby. The bank has been attacked, and the hostage set free. And who done did it? Other than Mr. Connor. With no other option, he sees it fit to free Scott Measure. But how did he do this? You're about to find out. He holds in his hand a weird metal ball and throws it, attempting to kill Mayor Smith. But her bodyguard activates a force field and deflects the blow onto Mick Jones, killing him. And that was my time with Broken Roads. Frankly speaking, I can't get it out of my mind. Where is this plot heading? Where did that guy get the Halo 2 plasma grenade? I gotta know. If you would also like answers to these burning questions, check out Broken Roads. Clicking the link in the description directly helps the channel. And I do feel it is a game that I'd recommend to fans of PC RPGs. Once again, thanks to the video sponsor. And until next time.